Aloha and welcome to my home. My name is Kimo and today I'm going to be sharing with you some crafts made from stuff from my stash. So let's jump right into the first project. These carved wooden vases originate from these little wood pieces that you get from Dollar Tree. Uh, they actually come in a pack and they've got a couple of different sizes here. These that are longer and also these that are in a square shape. And you can see that they come in a pack like this. In this case, the square ones came in a pack of six and they are 4.5 by 4.5 inches. Now I'm gonna take some of this beautiful color of this craft paint here and I'm gonna use a sock to rub that color on, rub that paint on to each of these wooden pieces. Now I'm using a sock to apply the paint to these wood pieces, kind of similarly to how you might use uh, a sock or a piece of cloth to apply some stain to a wood. And I'm doing that because I actually want some of the wood to show through the paint. I think that'll be a really lovely effect. And it also happens to dry faster because you're applying on a thin coat. I am applying two different coats here to each of these wood pieces. And you can't forget the edges. And I'm actually doing both sides of these wood pieces as well. And I found that applying the paint in the direction of the grain works best. Now, after the paint has had a chance to dry, which won't take very long, by the way, I'm taking out my wood carving set, and I've only used this a couple of times before, and so I don't pretend to be a wood carving expert by any stretch of the imagination. But I've chosen one of the tools that has kind of a wider mouth, which will give me a wider stripe, if you will, as I'm carving these pieces out. I'm just starting from one end of that wood piece and traveling onto the other end, and uh, just kind of seeing what pops up. And you can see here that I'm getting lines of different widths and sometimes I'm not getting a clean line all the way across that wood cut out. But I kind of like this organic effect that I'm getting here with the uneven lines and maybe unfinished lines. It makes it look a lot more organic. Perfect for a natural boho kind of style. You can see here that I'm finishing up on the fourth and final plank for this uh, pink vase that we'll be making. And I love just the organic lines. You know, they're not the same. They're not uh, completely even or even straight in a lot of cases. But again, I really like that sort of organic feel. Uh, but as we move on to the other set of wood planks, the square wood planks here, I'm gonna get a little bit braver and I'm going for more of an intentional design. So you can see that I've blocked off certain sections of those wood cutouts just with some painter's tape. And I'm going to just carve out or scoop out little sections um, beneath those lines to really create this intentional diagonal design. And by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video. If you are an old time subscriber, I just appreciate you so much. Mahalo for your time in watching these videos and giving me that encouragement and support that truly means a lot to me. And if you're new around here, I also wanted to say aloha and welcome to my channel. I'm hoping that you're finding some inspiration today. And if so, please like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video to my channel. So we've got both sets of our vase planks carved out the way that we want them to. And I'm gonna be forming them into, I guess you could call either a vase or maybe a vase cover using these small Jenga tower blocks that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just simply applying a little bit of hot glue and putting those little Jenga blocks into the corners. And before you know it, you'll get this little structure that you can encase around uh, some flowers or succulents. They become little cute vases or little vase covers. And of course, we'll do the same thing to the other set of wood planks here, this time in the pink. And we're going to add those little Jenga blocks again in the corners, forming this structure. Now, I'm new to wood carving, but I'm wondering if anyone out there has some experience. Let me know in a comment down below if you've worked with wood carving and wood carving tools before. 
Now with our vases fully formed, we're just gonna add some floral and succulents. To the smaller one, I'm adding these Dollar Tree succulents. I just love the colors and how huge they are actually. Makes it look so full and so uh, deserty. And on the taller one, I'm just gonna put in some Dollar Tree floral. And before you know it, here are our final results. I am amazed with how beautiful these turned out. I love the contrast between these colors and the little wood carvings. I think it makes for a really beautiful and high-end look. Today's video is part of a really special collaboration and challenge that's called Craft Your Clutter. This is a challenge that is hosted by my friend Liz, the official craft nerd. She asked me to be her co-host for this particular challenge and I couldn't be more pleased to do so. Liz is an amazing maker with a fun and quirky style. I've got a link to her channel in my description box below, as well as a link to the playlist where you'll find all the videos from the other makers who are also crafting from their stash. So I encourage you to go ahead, check them out, get some inspiration, show them some love and support, and also please let them know that Chemo Craft sent ya. Now, I truly, truly love wall art and making wall art. And I think because of that, I've got a ton of these canvases, little canvases, big canvases, all shapes and sizes in my craft stash. And so for this project, I get to use up one of those canvases. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is to draw out some lines to create a grid. I bought these little wood crescent moon cutouts probably two or three years ago from a thrift store. And although I think that they're so cute, I just haven't used them all this time. And so this is a great project for me to use them up. And I'm going to be applying them to the canvas just using some hot glue. And then I'm going to paint over them, creating this really cool and fun texture using a combination of chalk paint with a little bit of baking soda. You may have seen this trick already on Instagram or on YouTube, but adding baking soda to paint, water-based paints like uh, chalk paint or acrylic paint, craft paint, even latex paint would work for this effect. It really gives you a stunning texture. And in this case, I'm using a ratio of about one to one, one part paint to one part baking soda to try to get uh, build up some texture onto the surface of this canvas. I applied two thick layers of this chalk paint and baking soda combination to really build up this textured effect. And I thought I would add just a little bit of copper spray paint to give it some bling. There was a little bit of overspray and so I'm just taking a small flat paintbrush and cleaning up those lines a little bit. I think the color combination that I chose gives this piece kind of a modern boho kind of effect, but really you could use any color combination you want. And here's our final result. Up close, you can really see this beautiful texture, and I actually think that the metallic copper spray paint brings out that texture even more for a high-end look. This faux concrete trinket tray might be the easiest project in this video, but I'm telling you what, you will be amazed at the results that we'll get from this project. This gold colored charger tray came from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna be adding on some feet to the bottom of the tray and the feet are actually these large wooden beads. I'm using E6000 glue on the bottom of the tray to really ensure a good hold. I didn't think that I'd be able to, to get a great hold just using regular hot glue. And after applying each of the feet here, you really need to make sure that you give uh, E6000 glue some good drying time. So I actually let this dry overnight before the next step. I remember buying three of these little charger trays from Dollar Tree about a year ago and had great plans in using them, but it just never came about. So this is a really great project for me to upcycle and use these little trays. After giving time for that E6000 glue to dry, we're gonna move on to our painting step. Again, I'm gonna be using some baking soda, and I actually have a combination here of three different kinds of colors of paint. I've got the uh, plaster 
chalk paint, the Waverly chalk paint there. I also have some black acrylic paint and some dark gray acrylic paint. So I'm trying to get the color as close to a concrete color as I can. Then I'm adding in some of that baking soda. And in the baking soda, I'm going uh, for about a one to one ratio with one part baking soda to one part paint. Now you've seen me use this paint trick before with a combination of acrylic paint and baking soda, so that's nothing new. But what I will say is that by tinting the paint, you can get this faux concrete effect and you're gonna be amazed at the results. So you can see here that I'm laying on the paint pretty thick because I wanna get that texture built up. And I'm actually gonna let that paint dry as you see that it's completely dry here, but I'm gonna add another layer of paint, again using that baking soda, and I'm gonna lay it on really thick. You can see here that I'm not using long gliding strokes with my paintbrush. In fact, I'm doing the exact opposite. I'm actually using, using a stippling effect. Stippling basically means that you're kind of dabbing it on, uh, you're kind of poking the bristles uh, to create that textured look. And after I have applied this second coat, I'm gonna let it dry. And you can see here already how beautiful this is looking, but we're gonna amp it up just a little bit more using some white antique wax. Now white antique wax looks kind of like paint. It goes on, glides on kind of like paint as well. But you wanna make sure that you get it into all the little grooves and corners and cracks and crevices of your project. So I'm actually using a brush that's specifically made for applying wax, but I think that just about any brush will work. Again, you just wanna make sure that you get into all of those corners and those grooves. It will really make for a, a fantastic end result. After I've applied this antique wax all over our tray, I'm gonna take a cloth, and in this case, the cloth is just a, a little cut up t-shirt sleeve that I've got. I'm gonna start rubbing away some of that antique wax to reveal more of the color beneath. With this technique, I love the little white residue that's left behind in all those little crevices. And here's our final result. Even up close, this little trinket tray looks so much like concrete, it's ridiculous. And we're using this tray to hold some of our personal grooming items, and I love this beautiful high-end look. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell to get notified every time I upload a new video to my channel. And see ya next time.